Welcome back to the Deep Digger Sports Pod. I'm your host, Drew. My other host right over there. What's up? It's D. Good to see you again. Be sure to hit that like button. Be sure to drop some comments below and make sure you subscribe because we are coming down the home stretch here with college football. The weeks are just ticking by. I wanted to start with BYU losing to Kansas in an upset. I know they could still get in with the conference championship game, but this is a huge blow for BYU in a game that really was decided by a quarterback punting the ball and hitting the ball off a helmet of a BYU receiver. BYU still getting in the playoff, or you think Colorado sneaks in now? I had been thinking that Colorado was going to sneak in, but I was I was kind of doing a doomsday scenario where in my mind it was like a BYU ran the table and then they lost in the championship game, and you have to put two Big 12 teams. Now this loss with BYU really does mitigate that, and it's only going to be a one-bid league moving forward. And it is kind of up for grabs. I I do think Colorado has a path. And I think Colorado, I mean, we'll talk about their game a little bit later because that's something I want to dig into. I think they're looking pretty good. I'm going to be completely honest. I think they could beat this BYU team that's been flirting with disaster for the past, a, a couple of times throughout this season. And it finally came back to bite him in the butt. Yeah, this BYU team is really good. Don't get me wrong. But they have been playing with fire in these games, really winning close games throughout. And things just been breaking their way. And in this one, it just felt like there was not necessarily that they were, it didn't feel like they were going to lose, but it felt like dagger after dagger, things were going wrong that weren't leading to a good conclusion for them. And Colorado is rolling right now. Like, I, I, I really don't know what's going to happen in that matchup because I like Rhett's laugh. I like their running game. Uh, I like their what their defense could do at times, but Prime just has Colorado ball in right now. Yeah, and again, we'll talk about Colorado like right after this, but to stick to BYU, B, you're right. It just seemed like all these like mistakes, little things here and there snowballed for BYU. And you see that, like as you mentioned, the quarterback punt that ends up going off of a helmet and just it just seemed like football karma was in the air. And those last second uh wins that BYU pulled out earlier in the season came back to it was just the ghost of football past you know what I mean and it was just something that it this was the karma that they were they were had coming to them and people had this slated like okay BYU is gonna lose here BYU is gonna lose here and it finally just hit to where I mean this is a Kansas team that's like arguably like one of the best losing records coming into this game I mean they were red hot they beat a Iowa State team and just crush their soul. They go out and they beat this BYU team. And I mean, looking at the schedule, they actually play Colorado the last game of the season. They just want to play spoiler. And I think that they have a really strong team to do that. Yeah, I mean, I think you can't take anything away from Kansas where they played a, a great game. They, you know, got innovative with that play call. Jalen Daniels is a pretty solid quarterback they have there. And they just, I felt like they just wanted more. I, I didn't think that there was a lot of urgency from BYU at the end of this game that felt like, oh shit, we could lose this game. It felt like they were in a situation where like, well, you know, we'll just go down and score. When it got down to the final two minutes, when BYU is rolling, they're throwing the ball great, but they, they want the game to end with them getting a touchdown with as little time on the clock as possible. But I feel like it took away so much momentum from that offense to say, okay, well, let's run the ball three times. Let's make Kansas use those timeouts just in case they come back later. But I felt like BYU should have just thrown it, punch in the touchdown and play defense. And they got a little, you know, got a little too cute with it. They got a little in their head on trying to play the analytic of it when you needed a score to win. You needed a touchdown to win. and you should have had that first in your mind rather than let's run the clock out so that Kansas doesn't get another shot after we score and you, and you didn't score. Yeah. And I know everyone talks about like, realistically it is a big pivotal moment was that punt and then the mismanagement of the clock in the fourth quarter. But realistically, one of the bigger things that was more telling was Retzloff just being sloppy and throwing a pick in the end zone at the uh, uh, second end of the second or the end of the first half, that really kind of showed me what kind of game BYU was playing. And it's like, okay, ah, oh, it doesn't matter. We're going to score anyways. 
It was so nonchalant to just throw it up there. It it was just a, a duck on a cloud. It was pretty it was pretty telling. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it, it felt kind of like how Miami's been this year where Oh, yeah, probably should have lost a couple of these games, but we're winning, so we're going to feel comfortable in these situations in the fourth quarter. And then you lose, and it just takes away all what you built on the season. And, yeah, both those teams can still win their conference, but they're definitely flawed teams, and they're definitely not worth, I think, a top 10 ranking. Well, and what I – the thing I do worry about or I'm like, okay, I'm very interested to see – Cam Ward said it after Miami lost. He was like, okay, we needed that. We needed the the kick in the pants to really put it on. And my thing was like, okay, well, Cam, you didn't need five kicks in the pants. Like this was coming. This is a loss coming off of you not looking good for or the team not looking good and being in these firefights for weeks. For BYU, it's kind of the same thing. They've been dabbling in this like, okay, we're kind of playing on the edge here. Does this turn into an Iowa State thing where, okay, we got the loss and then we go out the next week and just lose again just because we're demoralized or do they rally back and look better and try to close out this season because there's more on the line right now? Like what, what do you think is going to happen with BYU moving forward? I'm not sure. Cause I, I think what we were talking about Colorado is so hot and BYU, like they're better. Their roster is better than 13 points against Kansas. Like, they really felt like they were kind of coasting um, energy-wise in this game. And you're right. They should have had more urgency from the start of this one. Like, let's get out there. Let's get a two-score lead. Let's kind of, Then we'll coast. And it just felt like they never really got to put it all together. And they didn't feel like they were going to lose until the very end. Make sure you subscribe, comment, like, all that good stuff. All right. Later.